How many of you guys are immigrants or children of immigrants? How many of you are currently working in the industry, either as an owner or a manager, employee? How many of you want to get into the industry? Great, we got a little feel for the room now. Most people believe the American dream is a simple equation. Money plus fancy stuff equals happiness. This is more than inaccurate. If you believe it, you're selling yourself short. This mentality has the potential to make us miserable. The American dream isn't about fancy stuff or buying new cars every year. It's about doing what you love. Here, right now, whether you are already a part of the industry or whether you want to get into the industry, we all have an incredibly rare opportunity. We have a window of time to have more influence than small businesses often get these days. We have an opportunity to set the course for the American dream as we see fit. My name is Aviv Hadar. I am one of the original co-founders of Oregon, and I am an immigrant. Born in Israel, I moved to Chicago and grew up very poor to a single mother. My family brought me to America to try and create a better life, to try and build an American dream for my brothers and me. This is not an abstract concept to an immigrant. It really is what makes this country, at its best moments, a shining light around the world. And that's what drew my family here, and what shaped my vision for what was possible. I remember being eight years old and watching TV in our tiny apartment in Skokie, Illinois, and I realized that we were the only family I knew that still had a black and white television. In that moment, I realized my mom had been hiding the fact that we were struggling so much. I truly appreciated her sacrifices for us. That was the moment I knew I wanted to create a better life for my family. Flash forward 10 years later, I'm sitting in the computer science lab in college at the University of Montana, and it strikes me that I have a responsibility to my family to make good on this American dream. I realized that this wouldn't happen sitting in a college computer lab. I wasn't moving anything forward, and my family could barely afford to pay tuition. So I said, Shit, I need to quit school and start my own company. So I went out and founded a software company. As an entrepreneur in the software industry, I quickly learned two things. Failing early and failing often are critical to long-term success, and that the team you build is more important than having the next big idea. I learned these lessons the hard way, like most of us do, not out of a book. But there also came a moment when I realized that the American dream was about more than just succeeding at a business and making money. In that moment, I saw that the real American dream is again about doing what you love. Because when you are doing what you really love, you won't quit when everything gets really, really terrible. And at a particularly terrible moment in my career as a software entrepreneur, I looked around and realized that one of my best friends grew the best cannabis I'd ever smoked in my life. His name is Justin Cron. So Oregon was born because I wanted to share that beautiful cannabis with the rest of the world. One of the first things I noticed about the cannabis industry is that it has some similarities with the tech industry. One of the key similarities, frankly, is that the bro culture slash good old boys club is really prevalent. And it is incredibly destructive. At Oregon, we are being very deliberate about our company culture. It begins with hiring people based on talent, not college degrees. Respecting our core values internally as well as externally by engaging with our community. Many people told me Oregon was a stupid idea. They told me cannabis was just for lazy stoners, that the company was a waste of money, we'd never get off the ground because of regulations. They told me we'd never pass Measure 91 in 2014 during a non-presidential election year. And they were wrong. I worked with my extremely intelligent and well-educated wife to found this business and get it off the ground. I learned about gender equality, equal pay in company cultures that have been historically destructive in the past. I realized that we are all in a position to make a difference when it comes to the way women are valued in the workplace. Being able to shape a new industry the way we see fit. A second similarity between tech and cannabis is a gold rush mentality 
that leads some companies to try and get in and make a fast buck. These companies do not care about community engagement unless it's as a corporate whitewashing. Instead, Oregon sees community engagement as something to invest in because first of all, we live here. Our kids go to school here. We support our community because it's ours. Secondly, we feel a strong sense of duty to help destigmatize and normalize cannabis. By participating in and supporting local events, we lower the veil and we make ourselves accessible. The general public is curious. They want to know about what we have to offer. They want to know about how our companies operate, what our core values are, what we believe in, what our story is. Yes, we had to break down barriers in order to become the main sponsors of events like the Bite of Bend, Oktoberfest, Winterfest, the Summer Fair, and launch high profile projects with more conservative community groups like the Humane Society of Central Oregon. Yes, it costs us endless hours of staff time and tens of thousands of dollars every year. But boy oh boy is it worth it. It continues to make our industry easily accessible. We live by the belief that our investment in this industry comes back to us on a daily basis. When someone who would normally never walk into a cannabis dispensary stops by our booth at one of these local events, they realize we are not the enemy. They realize we are good neighbors, good stewards to our land, and responsible members of our community. This is absolutely priceless. This, alongside everything else that we do, is one of the main reasons we believe so passionately in giving back to our community. By representing our industry in a bright, positive light at large community events, the public sees what we are all about. They see our passion and they feel our infectious excitement. Preaching to the community about job creation is one thing. Actually showing it to them is another. In closing, if you take away anything from this talk, let it be the following. The American dream is very much still alive, but it is up to us to make our American dream something that truly reflects our values. Building an industry from the ground up is a once in a lifetime opportunity for all of us. Let's make the most of it. And don't be hindered by corporate cultures from the past. Shatter those glass ceilings, set an example for others. The one thing we don't need more of in this world are overprivileged, out of touch corporations, that do more harm than good. Be the change that we all want to see. Please. <laughs> One final note. Um, a couple years ago, Amy and I put together a fundraiser for Congressman Earl, who's Earl Blumenauer, who's part of a very important national congressional cannabis caucus. Uh, we may be doing that again, so we may be reaching out to everybody to come show support for our biggest champion. So thanks, everybody, for, for coming tonight. Thank you very much.